What's up people, my name's Anthony and welcome to September. Today I'm going to be walking you through creating this beginner cloth setup inside of C4D. Uh, we're going to be quickly skimming over some stuff which I'm sure you've seen before because this isn't the first tutorial that's been done on this. But we're going to take a look at creating some towel materials inside, um, how to add your own texture and then eventually composite this into your own result. So you've got a pretty unique and well composited look here. Um, taking advantage of obviously the new cloth mechanics inside of C4D and uh, just covering a few concepts that you can obviously experiment with to generate something new. Um, I think it's quite a cool result, so without any further ado, we can hop straight into a new project. Um, so, setup wise, we're actually working quite easy and obviously it's one of them simulation type tutorials, so we're gonna need to go in the viewport for a bit. Um, the setup is not too complicated, so what you really wanna do is quite literally just grab a plane um, obviously important to bear in mind that your measurements kind of matter when you're working with cloth. So if we just look into dual lines just so we can see our geometry real quick. Uh, and we set our width and height to something maybe, my initial thought was towel, right? But I wanted a, a, a decent sized towel. So I went for about 500 by 500 centimeters last time, I believe. Um, we can go for something like that again, but if we're really trying to be accurate, maybe we can go for two by two meters max, right? So we go 200 by 200. This should save us a little bit of time as well uh, in terms of simulating. And we can add our width and depth segments to maybe something like 50. We can increase this more, but the higher we increase this, it's more added subdivisions, which are gonna bite us back later on. So we're better off sort of keeping this the way we are now. Obviously we can um, try to narrow this, but generally this is a pretty, pretty good beginner setup to have. And this is the extent of obviously, if we're working with a towel, this, this is what our cloth is really gonna look like. So we have the freedom now to literally hit C on our keyboard, bake this, and right click, head to simulation tags and hit cloth. So if we play now, we see the cloth is just gonna fall and that's because we've got the gravity activated. So if we wanna change that, we need to head to mode, project, make sure we're in simulation and just whack that gravity all the way down and you can see how that cloth is gonna start floating. And now our setup is gonna be manipulated by the forces that we add. So if we wanna add a force, we need to head to simulate, hop into forces here and we can start with a few. So obviously a lot of these, you can experiment with all the settings and sort of see which one they do. The one I used in the previous setup was rotation. And what I did was literally heading into fields, hitting spherical field. And you can see that if we just could change our rotation settings real quick from acceleration to force and make this maybe something like five, we can hit play and see that our cloth is twisting, but albeit in the wrong direction. So if we were to rotate this about 90 degrees this way, our cloth should start rotating along the right axis, but it's far too big. Just swinging our cloth all the way around. So if we change our field size to maybe 15 centimeters, you kind of want, you, you want to think of this as sort of the origin point, right? This is where the actual twisting is going to occur and this is where you want the drag to be. So if you were to do this, you can see we're getting a result there, but we want the power to be down a little more. Obviously this, at this point, the power of the rotation is directly correlated to the size of your towel that you picked at the beginning, right? So we turn the angle speed down a little bit and we should start to get some pretty, pretty nice results. Um, we have some more customization that we can do inside the cloth tag, but these aren't 100% necessary for what we're doing at the moment. We've got some stretchiness, so obviously we can play with these, we can turn our bendiness down, see how this affects our cloth. We could even double this, and potentially this would add some more creases and things like that. Yeah, we make it up this, and you can sort of, thanks, thanks to the new, new system, the, the, the simulations are so much quicker that you have the ability to sort of play with this far more. You can increase the stretchiness maybe to five. You see, so we're getting some pretty nice crumply looks, which I think eventually sort of just end up in a ball towards the end. But nonetheless, gives us a nice ability to create some cool looks. So say you were happy with this and the look generally was sort of what we were after. Previously, I just zoned in on the sort of inch cut middle bit as a shop. So from here, we can start thinking about texturing, compositing a little bit and adding a few more subdivisions. So always safe to save at this point. We can hit enter and start making this a little thicker because right now, obviously, we've just got a one axis plane. So what we can do is head here to cloth surface, 
drag our plane inside the cloth surface and you can see it's subdivided it a little bit but still not added much thickness so if we head in here and just make the thickness maybe one centimeter that's a pretty good thickness i'd say for a towel bearing in mind obviously the thickness you're going to have the strings from both sides but when i say strings i mean sort of uh like fine fabric that you get on on towels um that's the way i sort of thought about the thickness so for me one kind of works and then we can drop that really quickly into a subdivision surface just to really round out these corners um nicely like that obviously make sure you're doing this before i'm sorry after make sure you're subdividing after you run your simulation otherwise as you'll see in a sec it is far laggier so it's not going to be as as coherent but it should still work um, if you're happy with the way the simulation looks, you can even head into the cloth tag here, head to forces, or not forces rather, you can head straight to the cache and hit cache scene, and then it's quickly going to cache your simulation for you, uh, and that means that you won't have to simulate it every time, and you can also drag through the timeline to sort of find the frame that looks the best, uh, any second now this should be, should be finished and we should be good to go. So after this we can literally hop open our Octane setup and start dragging in some seamless towel textures, which obviously you can find. I found one that I'll show you in a sec. And if you go back to my normal map tutorial, uh, we use the same method to take a texture that we found and then generate some bump and normal maps from it, which we can use to fill up the spaces in our Octane materials and create a completed result. So we're sitting at about 90% here. Give it any sec and we should be good to go. And you'll see that we can now, obviously, regardless of the subdivisions, we can play through this much easier. We don't need to have the subdivisions on all the time. Maybe when we come to rendering and materializing, we can change it a little bit. But for now, let's pick a frame somewhere around here, which looks the best, pop that in, and we can create a super basic setup just by hitting save. We can go into our resolution here, make sure we're picking maybe 1000 by 1000. Make sure we're hitting into Octane Render. We can just hit our tab one more time to pull up our viewport. Make sure we're selecting aces and path tracing like we religiously always do. We can set up our render settings here real quick so that we're working with something nice. Hit Render, lock it up, and we can create an Octane camera. Hop it in here and change the focal length to something which doesn't look so far away. And pretty quickly, we're getting a nice, neat little setup here. So we can zoom in a little bit just because we're getting a little bit of black out of that corner. And we can start lighting this a little bit and follow up with some neat texturing. So we head to HDRI environment super quickly. We can head in here, find our trusty HDRI that we like. Make sure we're plugging this straight into ACES. And we can duplicate this and get ourselves a black background so as to focus up on the towel. Uh, you'll realize that because of the simulation and the way these creases have a lot of parts which is sort of negating the light as well as catching it at the top we'll have a lot of control with the way we light and this is going to have a massive effect, or effect, effect on the way our um, final render will look so bear that in mind and this rotation next here will be your best friend in manipulating the light so what we can do now is we can start texturing so we go to the first frame just so we've got our blank towel here we can find some texture that we like and get going. So if we head to materials, click create, and then head to Octane Universal Material, <clears throat> I will show you the textures that I located, which was this one in particular. Um, I'm pretty sure I just found this on Google, but it was a nice seamless towel texture, which had the details which I was looking for. And using these two options here, I generated a bump and normal map, adjusting the sort of low, mid and high values to create this bump map and this normal map. So now that we have those and we can generate our material, or rather we generated one already, we can hop in here and go into node editor and save to use a universal material when you're going for stylized looks like this, because for some reason the diffuse and glossy material preset sort of tend to either miss out looks or become a, make it a little tough to sort of get the look that you're after. So to be safe, I go in here and I literally grab my textures that I generated, drag them in and making sure we're chucking things into aces. We've got our main textures here. 
So we can plug that into Albedo, making sure this is in normal here. And this can go into our bump channel. And we're gonna to need to transform these, no doubt, because if we drag this material on now, you'll see that it is gonna be far too large. So instead, all we need to do is head to our node editor and we'll go for the same color scheme that we went before, black with a September logo. We can head to our UV transform node here and quickly plug this down to maybe 0.5 or something smaller. Maybe if we just quickly see what we're working with, maybe something like 0.25. Seems to look a little better. And we can, ooh, 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 ooh. that went all the way off. Maybe, maybe something like 0.2 just to be a, a touch smaller. Plug that into our bump and normal channels. Just making sure we're plugging the right things in. We can have the normal channel in there, move the bump over. And we want to take away this blue real quick. So we can drop a color correction in here, desaturate this and make this a little bit of a darker gray. So we can up the gamma to something like this. And then if you took, if you take a closer look, the normal does do a nice job, but it doesn't quite create the look that we're after. You can see it's still quite planar. So what we can do is quickly create a little displacement tab. And what I did was use the black and white towel bump texture, which was good enough for this purpose. And just plugged that into, or oh, rather the height for this can be far too high. You do not want 31 centimeters. You want about probably one, I'd say. And set the level of detail quite high. So you're getting the detail in your render. Plug this in, do, 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 just like this and you'll see that you're getting a towel. So this is a little high, you can see we're working with something quite spiky there. 0.5 should be about the sweet spot. When you're close up like this, it looks a little off, but when you're a little further away and you're actually catching the light, you'll see that you're starting to get a quite a towely look. So from this point, what you can do is, I had, had some a few experiments with this, so I wasn't sure if you actually needed the roughness channel. This is what it looked like with roughness off. And when you plug roughness in, it's almost no different at all. But what I did find was that it seemed to um, dull a few overexposed sort of reflections to the light. So I, for the sake of just filling up these these textures, I dragged a color correction node and just inverted it so that we're getting a nice roughness scatter across it. Um, it's not 100% necessary, but it's worth doing, I'd argue. So we can make sure we're saving our way through this. And if we want to add a texture on this, it's actually super easy. We've already got black here, so my initial idea was literally to drag in our logo just here, moving that on top. And it's just the albedo that we need in this scenario. So we can make sure we're working aces here, grab a super quick add node, and literally drag our color corrected, desaturated gray albedo, plug that in here, and we have our logo plastered on our towel here. So we can rotate this round, get the look, and you can see what we're working with. This looks quite nice, in my opinion. Uh, obviously you can put whatever you want on here, but typically add node works by, I explained in previous tutorials, but you're taking the black from this logo here, it's removing that and plastering that on whatever the other source is, which was already black. So really, really they're working together here, but a little bit of Photoshopping and potentially um, removing certain colors and you can get a pretty similar result using your own stuff. And having said that now, what we can do is head into our camera and start playing through the simulation a little bit, see what kind of looks we're getting. Obviously we've cached it already, so we don't need to play it from the start. We can hop into any frame, just like one of these. And we can see the looks we're getting. So we're getting a little bit dark here. So if we want to change that, we can hop into our HDRI and start turning this around to add, or rather customize where the light source is coming from. This HDRI in particular has one big window, which sort of tends to be where the majority of the light comes from. And already you can see we're getting some really nice detailed looks and the towel material is really starting to shine, especially where the way it catches the light. And if you wanted to take this one step further, we could add a little bit of customization in camera. So we could have some super easy depth of field, quite literally by hopping into the depth of field, unticking autofocus, grabbing our trusty focus function, hitting somewhere in the middle and setting the aperture to maybe five or something quite subtle. 
generally when you're working with depth of field, you want to keep it quite subtle because it can distract the shot. And um, I mentioned this before, but a lot of times if you're working with a sort of lackluster render, you find yourself leaning on depth of field and bloom and stuff like that. Um, when in reality, you should be using the render engine to really, you know, make your render shine um, and take advantage of it. So use it sparingly, but when done correctly, it can really add a nice touch to your renders. And with a little more tweaking, and if you really want the light to shine in the right places, obviously, bear in mind the way that it's shining on the right here is sort of um, oversaturating it, or over exposing it rather, very slightly. And you're getting a little bit of oversaturation here on the red, so find what you like. If you want, you can even go about adding some gobos and some super creative lighting to a scene like this. And before you know it, you're getting some pretty cool realistic results using aces here. Um, rather we can head through here. Something around here tends to look good because of the way the, the uh, the light comes in and without overcomplicating that anymore we have a pretty accurate towel look here we can go about catching some other parts of the simulation as well so if we just rotate this through you can see we're getting some pretty cool parts here where the towel source we can see our depth of field needs a little bit of adjusting there we can hit this and you can see the way this towel sort of folds up here is quite nice although this avoids the light massively in this particular angle so we can rotate this a little more and you see here the way it catches that edge there's super nice and if we just find the right part you can genuinely create some super creative nice realistic looks with this technique so having said that thank you for watching i hope you can show me any new ways that you apply this technique in your projects and i will see you very soon with a new content package i'm currently developing um which will be very exciting so thank you for watching i appreciate all the support and i'll see you in the next video